Hello everybody, welcome to episode 8 of Greg Tech New Horizons, and as you can see, I'm doing just a tiny little bit of clearing just before the video starts, or I guess as the video is starting. Uh, this is because I do kind of want to take a little bit of time in this episode to work on the base a little bit. These are the chests from the smeltery that we have set up. Um, I... I kind of want to get started on the second story down here. Uh, as you may know, I've talked about it a couple of times, I want this base to be multiple stories tall. Um, I want this to basically be our entire game base. I might move the, um, the farm up there, maybe up an extra layer, up onto the top of the building, but I'm not really sure. Um, Obviously, we're incredibly early game. This is probably, we're probably less than 10% through the pack at this point, maybe closing in on just around 10%. Um, so yeah, we got a lot of work to do, but you know, we can make everything look good. Right now, everything up here, as I can show you really quickly, it just looks like a cube. I need to make this outside look like decent, decorated. I'll probably replace some of these blocks at some point, but for now, uh, this is just obviously the cheapest material. We can come by cobblestone and uh, we need to do our best with it. So I'm just gonna dig some of this stuff out. I'm smelting up a little bit of aluminum, a little bit of steel, and by a little bit, I mean multiple stacks of each. Uh, and hopefully all that stuff will be done by the time I've cleared out a significant portion of this underground vein. Looks like there's a coal vein down there. That'd be pretty cool to have near the base, though I don't know if I'll ever actually dig it up here because I don't mine over here. Okay, that's enough talking. I need to make some more chests to, to store all this junk, and uh, once I've done a little bit of progress, a little bit of mining, a little bit of whatever, I'll be right back. And welcome back. I know it's been a hot second since the last clip, and things are slightly laggier here for some reason. I think I'm gonna get rid of Hardcore Darkness because I think the amount of updates and like calculations it has to do literally makes the game laggy when you do something like this. Anyways, I built something like this. Let me go to sleep so we can see it a little bit better. So what we have here is the proposed wall thing for the building um also apparently it's dark in here believe it or not crazy right uh i've done a lot of building since i last recorded it's actually been almost two weeks since the last clip for various reasons actually uh this took a very long time to build uh also let me go into just um game mode one really quickly so i can show you guys the outside uh this is what it looks like uh, is it super cool? No. Why is this one layer weird? Because I'm not sure which color I want to make it. I think I'm going to go for this one actually, which will require me to replace all of these blocks and be super obnoxious, but hey, whatever. Uh, I also completely uh, figured out this layer right here, which is super, super nice. Uh, we now have the ability to walk down here and put pipes and whatever without like falling down and stuff and without having to place a ton of blocks because you know obviously this is like 40 blocks up if i need to make something over here it's going to be quite the hassle uh the other reason it's been a couple of weeks since i recorded my last clip is because as you may see there are some uh, better questing commands in here i had an issue with better questing where i've actually not finished fully getting myself back to where I was, I had to basically completely delete all of the configs for better questing and recomplete all of the quests that I'd already done. Um, I don't know quite what happened, but basically it wouldn't let it reset all of my quests. So I only had like this quest unlocked and some of these guys, but it wouldn't let me complete the checkbox quests or anything, so I couldn't complete any quests. I had to completely delete all of my better questing configs and then re-manually complete all these quests, and I'm gonna have to be very careful not to claim these, or I'm going to get a huge number of garbage quest rewards that I'm just gonna have to throw away, because obviously it's cheating if you take the quest rewards that you've already gotten once. So. Yeah, let me spend a couple more minutes figuring out which quests I've already done. I think most of these I have already done, maybe not this one, um, but yeah. I also, I did these, I don't know. I think things have changed. The quest book looks different from the last time I played. Maybe there was a small update because obviously like this one looks different as well. Um, this quest line used to be much weirder looking. I think it's much cleaner, but it's obviously just 
different. And I think there's a lot more quests in here now, because I've done these, obviously, and I've done Sulfuric Acid. I guess I completed that one. Um, but I don't think these quests used to exist, really, unless I've just never seen them before. Anyways, I'll be back in a minute, uh, and we can get on with the episode. I also did go ahead and change the way this thing looked. It's not wood anymore, it's now the polished stone, which is literally just chiseled stone. Um, I think it looks pretty nice. Anyways, uh, did I show you guys this too? I have a cobblestone generator now. This is just a transfer node with some world interaction upgrades. These aren't that expensive, just a little bit of time, and infinite cobblestone. It's actually quite fast as well, watch. Two per a couple times a second? I I like that a lot. All right, we're back. It's been a couple of minutes, but uh, you know, I've done a little bit of crafting. I have unified our wires into 8x redstone alloy wires, and the way I did that was by pulverizing them and then re-blast furnacing them. It took a minute, but I had to go run anyways, so it was just fine. And now I have a bunch of 8x covered wires over there, and I'm going to use 1x wires to run to our machines over here with a 1x battery buffer with this little bad boy. Hopefully that will fill up. Yep, should be good. Uh, and these machines can set, accept any amperage of Greg Tech. It doesn't really matter. They just need to fill up faster than they get, uh, you know, discharged by power usage. And one amp of LV power will very easily keep up with two of these guys because they're not harvesting all the time. They only use power when they harvest. So. Let me connect up the rest of these wires really quickly. 1x wires look so weird, but um, I'll be back in just a moment. Oh, and yeah, the other big thing that I guess just became very normal for me while I was working on this wall is that uh, our farm is going to be moved. I'll probably move it all the way up to the top of our base somehow. Um, not entirely sure. We don't need it yet. Once we actually need it, I'll throw a ladder to get up there and make everything perfectly fine. Also, the ladders for this thing were removed because I don't think I'm ever going to have to step foot in this thing ever again. Uh, we should be backlogging on water. Uh, I checked recently. We are backlogging on water. Uh, we're starting to run a little low on creosote, which is fine. We'll survive. And yeah, that should be good. Now that I've done all my talking, why don't we go ahead and fix something this episode? Let's get this electrolyzer up and running. Well, this electrolyzer is up and running. Let's get three more of them up and running. I think that would be great. So let me go ahead and do the crafting. Uh, I literally already looked it up and then I just deleted it. Electrolyzers, these are pretty cheap, right? Oh yeah, these are the cheapest things in the entire world, geez. So, all right, before we go any further, let me explain the system that I'm thinking. So we have water coming in on the bottom into these four electrolyzers that I've made right here. I'm sorry, that machine is just being so, so loud. It's really obnoxious. Um, and then power obviously comes in this side. I don't think I've hooked all of them up, so why don't we go ahead and do that really quickly. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to have item conduits along the top four of these sending items into here and then sucking the items back out and going into here. Um, this will require that I have a ton of empty cells in here, one, but I can't think of another way to do it without using Ender IO or using up a ton more space here. And I don't particularly want to uh, use up this entire rest of this line because we could put other stuff here. And there we go, not actually that bad. Four times the oxygen and hydrogen production, which is super, super cool. Um, it should all be hooked up correctly. We're getting the hydrogen here. Yep, as you can see, it's emptying and it goes into these guys. I put a full stack of empty cells in here, which is a bit expensive. I'm probably gonna need to make more soon, but um, that will be perfectly fine because it will allow these systems over here to backlog much, much faster. Now we do have one slight other issue. I'm gonna backlog on hydrogen really, really fast. Let's deal with that problem in just one second once I go ahead and fill up these uh, oil cells with my uh, at my oil base. I think I have a couple stacks over there, but I have the majority of my cells still in here. Oh no, guys, look what happened. Oh no. Anyways, uh, I have gone ahead and started filling up our oil cells. I have a feeling that oil thing is going to run dry very, very soon because we have a bunch of oil. 
But anyways, I also figured out a little bit of a system in order to start voiding fluids here because this will eventually backlog. Uh, this right here, this fluid trash can that is also trashing the oxygen, um, it means these, these electrolyzers will never stop running. And I think that will end up actually being fine because we're going to need oxygen all over the place in our base and eventually these iron tanks will just become artificial. They'll become like basically just lookers and we'll have like super tanks up here or something but i think i'm fine with this for now I, I would also be fine i'm just gonna keep an eye on it i'll disconnect this and see if we're back on oxygen and if we have a problem with hydrogen um i'll, I'll reassess the system but for right, for right now voiding all of our ex excess hydrogen is perfectly fine because we're only using it for one thing over there and that's actually one of my goals just accomplished for the day since we should probably just start following quest lines for now because we have a fair bit of infrastructure let's go ahead and start doing that now that i'm auto producing iron three chloride and we have about 48 buckets backed up over there first thing we need is plastic circuit boards so that will be a polyethylene sheet with four copper foil and sulfuric acid um i think that should be fine um, oh, also, I did end up throwing the rock salt in this system over here, so we have a ton of chlorine just kind of sitting here. We have a ton of chlorine, jeez. Awesome. I'm going to just go ahead and try and make an entire stack of plastic circuit boards uh, that will require two and a half stacks of copper ingots, which turns into... 10 stacks of copper foil. Anyways, we have 16 buckets of sulfuric acid in there. That is full. This is also full and backlogged. Sulfur trioxide backlogged and backlogged just fine. Okay, perfect. And we still have a fair bit of sulfur in here. In the meantime, while we're waiting for the copper, I can go ahead and get some transistors started. This is another part of circuits later on. And it's also a quest. Wow, it is so, so loud over there. I literally already turned the sounds down to 50% of what they were, which was 10%. I'm going to turn it down a couple bits more because I'm scared I'm getting overshadowed. Um, where are my copper plates? Hello, copper plates. Time for you to go into part two of Bending Machine. The foil maker thing. That kind of rhymed. I had also made up a bunch of wafers earlier, um, the monocrystal silicon bools, and then you just cut those guys into wafers. You can do it in the LV cutting machine, which is what I did. Um, these can be used in a couple of different recipes. Most importantly to me, the diode recipe. This is so much cheaper. It's about 16 times cheaper than it used to be, which is pretty cool. Um, but the quest itself actually wants you to make the advanced cutting machine, which is a little bit obnoxious. But I guess I'll go ahead and do it. There it is. Pretty simple. And there's that one complete. We can also grab some transistors from here and complete this quest. I forgot to tell it to output items, please. All right. I spent a hot minute on this, but here is the advanced precision laser engraver. This thing is how we're going to be able to upgrade our circuits very, very soon and begin crafting things like the HV circuits. Uh, the reason we need this is to make things like integrated wafers, random access memory wafers, or low power IC wafers. These will be used for multiple things, including um, other like hatches, energy hatches. We need to make MV energy hatches specifically for our blast furnace. This is part of the components that I was actually missing. So nice. In order to you, you know, use this precision laser engraver, you need lenses. The lens we need right now to make the one thing that I'm doing right now is the um, emerald lens so I'm gonna cut up a block of emerald and then I think I need to lathe it maybe I think it's hold on let me check last furnace no lathe yes however that does of course require an MV lathe so I went ahead and made one really quickly uh, it was actually fairly cheap so we do this and the normal Auto item output right there and go ahead emerald plate perfect it's going to take 300 million years to do that but it should be fine okay now i've got the emerald lens Oop, that was a mistake now i've got the emerald lens we can put it in there and get some wafers cooking up nice 
Okay, so I'm over where my oil pump is, but my oil pump is much lower than it used to be. We had stopped pumping oil, but I went down to check and make sure that the oil reservoir was actually fully drained, and it was not. It's only about halfway drained. Um, so we can continue pumping in this thing. It's it's gonna provide us a ton of oil. It's actually very, very wide and very, very deep. So this thing will provide oil probably till like beginning of HV, which will maybe be next episode. So yeah, so now I'm pumping here and um, we should just be good to go. All right, very fun thing, very, very, very fun thing. I got back to our base and panic made the Sterling water generator because we were down to under 200 buckets of water and dropping very quickly. This almost quadruples our water production. Maybe it triples our water production, 150 per second, uh, milliliters per second, or mill buckets per second or whatever you want it to be. But we are in a net gain of water now, which is good. Um, it's still not incredible, but once we backlog on oxygen, it should be all right. But then once again, we won't backlog on oxygen until we backlog on these polyethylene sheets, these polyvinyl chloride sheets, and other things too. Ugh. A really good utility that I suggest you make highly. It'll save you not only time, but just a tiny bit of sanity. It's these kinds of upgrades we need when we're playing Greg Tech. Um, the circuit assembler, which is made just like this in probably an MV circuit assembler. Or sorry, in an, an MV assembler. Ugh. I was trying to put this off, but I guess it's this game is just not giving me a choice. Okay, let's make the advanced assembling machine. This is a total of four circuits and a whole bunch of crafting. And there we go. Not actually that painful of a craft, but I did end up using pretty much all of the rest of my aluminum. I have none left in here, and I have a little bit over in the fluid solidifier, solidifying some more aluminum rods. So yeah, it's almost time for another aluminum run, and it's almost time for a lot of different kinds of runs, actually, uh, which is why we want to get circuit production kind of going. I want to try and make some of these good integrated circuits as soon as possible. Uh, anyways, enough talking. I want to put this directly next to my fluid extractor. Am I just gonna, am I actually gonna do this? Hold on. Flu nope, that's not a, that's not a typing. Fluid extractor. Advanced? That's completely doable, I think. Let me do it really quick. And there we go. We've got one circuit left to, left to go. And uh, this is gonna be used in our circuit assembler. Okay, nice. Uh, I, I do need to do another huge circuit batch craft very, very soon, but I don't know if I have time for the rest of this video. We'll see what happens. Anyways, advanced fluid extractor. Let's do it right here in the advanced assembly machine right there. And uh, I will set up the inputs and outputs for all of these guys. And I'll be right back. Two pieces of polyethylene in here. Send this into... Uh-oh. Uh... Wait, it's molten soldering alloy. I'm an idiot. Two pieces of molten soldering alloy, or two pieces of unmolten, and then they are molten, uh, and it takes 30 seconds to craft. Nice and simple. And there we go. It just got auto-exported. There we go. There is the circuit programmer, and we need to charge this guy. And I think we can do that just in any machine, just like this. As soon as it realizes it has, it has something in there, I think it'll charge. We'll give it a second. Apparently, it can only accept LV power. Whatever, it still charges very quickly. Then I think we can just open it. And here, let me go ahead and demonstrate. I have this circuit 24 over here that I actually don't think I want over here. But what I can do is I can put it in here and say, hey, I want it to be a circuit 20. 17, 10, 2. I actually do want it on 24, but um, yeah, that's the gist of it. All right, boys, it's the next day. Uh, I've done a little bit of stuff, but I am leaving tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. It is currently 7.40 p.m. I need to get this video recorded and out and edited and ready to go before like 1 a.m. 
I don't have time and I also have to go run for an hour before that time. So uh, we need to do things quickly. We need to work fast and get some stuff done. The next thing we want to do is probably make some of these integrated logic circuits. I've been working on all that stuff. We got all of our circuit parts cut up. Things are getting crafted slowly but surely. Um, and I'm waiting for this electrum wire actually. Uh, another thing we're going to do is we need to make the advanced seismic prospector. Obviously we can't do this until we've done stainless steel, so we need to make some HV circuits first and make some NV energy hatches, but we're going to get all that done right now because we now have the ultra low power IC um, wafers, circuits, whatever they're called. Before I can make those circuits though, I do need to make some more stuff. Um, we have better circuit board recipes actually in the assembler, and I use this one because we get two per, which is really, really nice. Um, and now I need to do 32 polyethylene sheets in here, two stacks of fine annealed copper wire, and that much wafer. And this will give us, I believe, two stacks of diodes? Yeah. And then we'll get on with the show. For this specific recipe, we also need resistors of some sort. Now we can make these crappy resistors right here. Oh my god, it's so loud. It's so, And apparently it's snowing. Um, we can make the crappy resistors, or we can make these very, very cool, very, very cheap SMD resistors, which are only very, very cheap now that we have access to molten polyethylene and a ton of carbon in the form of tiny piles of carbon dust that we're getting from this system right here that makes our ethylene for us, I think. Yes, yeah, so we have a bunch. By the way, I'm making 16 stacks of the uh, better capacitors because, wait, are they capacitors? Resistors, the better resistors, because might as well overkill it now so I don't have to keep making the recipe. Uh, anyways, I just need to finish one more craft here and we're ready to make a full stack of integrated logic circuits and that will make 32 good integrated circuits which actually is a one to one ratio into HV circuits so we can make 32 HV circuits right now. I think I'm going to make 16, 16 and then uh, I still have some LV circuits left over so we're good on those. And here we go, it's really noisy over here but that is the first better circuit and things begin crafting. I believe I have everything in here for two stacks of the integrated circuits. But uh, as you may also notice up here, I've sort of planned out our next steps uh, for the next couple of episodes probably. By episode 10, my goal is to definitely have the logistics pipe system up and running and we'll try and slowly make that a very sophisticated logistics pipe system. Um, so what do I want to do first? I want to make this advanced circuit assembly machine from MV once we have HV circuits. Then I want to slowly work towards the HV one, which requires EV circuits as well as HV stuff here. Uh, we do need a clean room in order to make EV circuits, so that's something we'll have to do along the way, but it's actually not that bad. It's actually a pretty cheap recipe, and we should be able to do it very early on in HV, which is what I'm going to do. Um, short term, I want this seismic prospect prospector, and I've considered doing some solar panel stuff, but I don't think we're actually going to do that. So that will be the next couple of episodes, and by now we should have at least a couple of circuits done. So we can pick those up, not complete the quest, because I'm going to have to force complete it because the game doesn't think I have cool resistors yet, and we can move on to the good integrated circuits. All right, here we go. We're coming up on the end of the integrated logic circuits, and that means I can begin throwing things into here to begin crafting the next tier circuits. I need those four things, I think, and then I just need the 64 of these, and we'll just put those in there, and that will make me 32 of the MV circuits, and we'll need some HV circuits to make the next tier. Uh, thankfully, this thing could be made in LV. I mean, if it couldn't be made in LV, we wouldn't be able to make the MV circuit assembler, so of course it can be, I guess. Uh, but what will I need for this? Uh, SMD transistors, this is gallium foil, no way that's happening. I need to use the other transistors that I got. Um, integrated logic, random access, easy. While I was waiting for your circuits to craft up, I thought we might as well get something else done as well. And here we go. There are the four medium voltage coils that go into the MV energy hatches. So there is the rest of the stuff as well. I managed to actually get some electro pumps from um, uh, loot bags from like quests in the MVH. So that saves me a ton of time. And now that I have this, I actually have completed the quest as well 
which opens us up to the HVH quests. So we want an advanced mixer, which is actually the cheapest machine in the entire age. I'm going to make one of these very soon after now. And then should the rest of our episode be making stainless steel? I think that wouldn't be the worst idea in the world. Let's check on the circuits, actually. I think they're probably done. Yes. So these can stay up here. I want this, 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 and that. And then these two extra stacks in here, and that will make us 16 HV circuits. One of the cool things about this medium voltage battery buffer right here, actually, is that it outputs 8 amps, even though we only have 4 things here. So what I can do is I can put my uh, blast furnace a little bit away and it will draw slightly more than four amps, but that will just most, for the most part, be completely fine. Um, or I could just move these two machines over a little bit. That might also be a move. I'm going to move the machines a little bit. And there we go, guys. 16 HV circuits. Very wonderful. And uh, now we can start working on our HV dreams. By the way, I did go ahead and buy some manganese ore. I couldn't find any other way to get it. Um, you can get it in a chrome vein. You can get it from pyrolusite. But I don't know where my pyrolusite vein is because I lost all of my bookmarks as, or waypoints, as you may know. Um, so that's just going to be a grind I get to do later on. I was trying to make, what it would it be? It would be nine stacks of stainless steel. That would be six stacks of iron, one stack of nickel, one stack of chrome, one stack of manganese. I'm not going to have enough of everything to do that. I might be able to pull off three or four stacks of stainless steel, which will be good enough. But, you know, we're uh, slowly getting this stuff done. I also now have an MV assembler so I can make this Braintech Aerospace Advanced Reinforced Duct Tape FAL84. I don't know why the name's so long, but it makes it so I don't have to actually repair this thing. I've never actually made a soldering iron. Um, I was going to, but then I remembered I could just make the tape. So we might never make a soldering iron because I hate maintenance on machines. And there we go. There's our advanced mixer. Very wonderful. I won't need to make another LV mixer. We could just have our LV mixer work on wet concrete for the rest of time. And... I guess I'll just go ahead and throw this bad boy there, and we'll do the normal automation thing. If you don't know, chrome in Greg Tech, or at least the first chrome you get, is made from electrolyzing ruby dust, and I can make, ooh, what, it would be 20 plus 7 pieces? So 27 pieces, which is, that's going to be a fair amount of stainless steel, actually. I just have to wait for this to process. And it's actually pretty quick. Oh, and we're getting some extra aluminum from here. That's amazing. And right here, this should be everything to make stainless steel. If I'm not careful, the iron and nickel will mix into Invar, which we don't really want. But if I just put this circuit on one in here... Nope, we, uh, we're mixing Invar. What did I... Hold on. Stainless steel dust. I thought it was on one. It is made in a circuit... Oh, no. It's on two. Whoopsies. Uh, sorry, guess I have some Invar now. At least we get to put our handy dandy circuit assembler to use once again, configuration two. And there we go, that should be making some stainless steel. It takes quite a long time in the mixer actually. So yeah, 45 seconds per craft and we have 30 crafts to do, but that'll be fine. This will be what, 30 times nine? That'll be 270 or approximately four and a half stacks of stainless steel. That would be amazing. An amazing starting point. All right, while this all craps up, it's gonna take half an hour almost. Um, I'm gonna go run. I have to run six, seven miles right now. So not actually an hour, like I said earlier, maybe like 40 minutes. Um, and hopefully this will all be crafted up by the time I'm done. We can start throwing it in the blast furnace. I think that will actually end our tech progression for today. I spent a lot of time on this episode. Um, and I'm quite exhausted on this pack right now, and I don't want to grind out any more circuits or any more machines or go and figure out the mining situation right now because I lost all my waypoints. So we'll probably go to the Twilight Forest, mess around there, try and kill some stuff, get the progression done, because we will eventually want to get the progression done anyways, and uh, hopefully that'll just be a fun time. I'll try and upgrade my armor slightly before we go as well. 
All right, run is done, but I just spent 15 minutes trying to recover my journey map data, and uh, yeah, that's not happening. Uh, it's stored apparently locally in each client, um, so it's stored with the actual like files for the game. It's not stored in backups. So journey map data is something you have to be very serious about if you want to back up. But anyways, there's a stack and a half of stainless, which is super nice. Uh, it's less nice considering I only have 24 aluminum, but you know, whatever, we can do our best. I was looking through quests on stuff that we can actually kind of complete going forwards, um, and there's not a whole lot. We can make some HP machine holds, but that requires gold, and uh, I used up all of my gold uh, in order to get to whatever some machine... Or no, it was a circuit production. Circuit production uses a ton of gold. I mean, I have some stuff in here like gold bolts and electrum rods that I could melt down, but no reason to really do that. You know what? Actually, right as I was uh, right as I was finishing that clip, I I saw that I already had twelve gold wires. So what we're gonna do is we're going to complete that first HV quest just so we can say we've done it. Circuit twenty four. Toss those in there. I do need to take the circuit out. Don't put that in there. Put that in there and we'll cover up some gold. And yeah, like I said, I made a ton of SMD res resistors. So we now use polyethylene sheets to make our MV machine holes, which is actually cheaper than wrought iron. I have so, so, so much polyethylene and soon this chest will fill up. So let me go ahead and gather the stuff that I need. I need to bending machine a little bit of the stainless steel, which appears to have now disappeared on me. There it is and hopefully it does work in the LV machine, and hopefully we will be able to complete this quest. And there we go, the first HV machine hole, really easy to make actually. That should be that quest done, and we get our first HV loot bag, which, that's hey, that's not actually a terrible reward. I'll take the transistors, we can toss them away for use in later things, and these are worth 100 coins, so whenever we wanna buy things, uh, we'll have a lot of coins, hopefully. And that opens up a ton of stuff. It wants us to make all of them at once this time. And I assume there are quests for all different kinds of things in here. We do want to make the transformer, so why don't we go ahead and make this right now because we actually have the capabilities to do so. Um, hopefully I can do this with just a thing of rubber. I can. I believe this is the recipe for the high voltage transformer. Wait, EV2HV. Wait, this is not what we need. Why would I need to transform EV power? Oh, because we can send power over longer distances using EV because the loss um, basically turns into nothing. With aluminum uh, wires, the loss is one EU per amp and at 2048, uh, loss starts to mean almost nothing. So I guess, I don't know, why don't, why don't we go ahead and make it? We don't really have any issues transferring power around. We are, our main goal for each actual um thing is why would i need this um for each actual tier is to make the uh, superconductors so we have resto and aloe here and i want to make uh, the mv superconductor very very soon actually we might as well go ahead and make all the stuff that we need to make the mv transformer which actually does the thing that i thought the hv one does is d does i didn't need to add is on there um turns HV to MV or MV to HV at a 4 to 1 ratio. So to do that, we need to make some small coils, which are made with one steel ring. And if you use fine and yield copper wire instead of just normal copper wire, you get double the output. Um, and it uses a tiny little baby bit of polyethylene. I'm going to make, what, four stacks of coils right now, just so we can use them throughout. Because they're not expensive, they're just a little obnoxious to make. Apparently, I also never fully leveled up my hatchet to have the full level of quartz, so it, it actually doesn't do the craziest amount of damage. 13 attack damage is nothing to sniff at, nothing to laugh at. It's a good amount of damage, but hopefully we'll get up to like 15 or 16 with all this. We haven't had our smeltery up for maybe an episode, maybe two episodes, so I thought we might as well go ahead and set this bad boy back up. Uh, no reason to not make it as big as humanly possible. This is a 5x5 internal 7x7 smeltery, which is really, really large if you uh, can't count. So yeah, hopefully this thing will work us wonders. I mean, I'll probably tear it down again eventually very, very soon. Um, why is there seared brick in there? Please do not be in there. Can I get a... Oh, I can get away with exactly one more layer. That's pretty nice. Um, 
I want to do this because I want to make a better hatchet. I want to make a better um, head for our hatchet so I can go kill things in the Twilight Forest. Instead of uh, doing steel, I actually had an incredible idea. We're going to do cobalt. And instead of actually doing cool things and smelting up all of my stainless, I'm going to smelt up a stack of cobalt so I can repair my axe at uh, various times. Might also change my pickaxe head to cobalt at some point, but for now we're just going to stick with the axe. Okay, let me finish eating. You did miss a uh, food cooking time with, with Andy today. I, I had to refill my lunchbox. But uh, sear drain here and here. Misplace this guy, I guess. And hopefully it is just one ingot per. Yep. And that should make a cobalt axe head. Cools off really quite quickly. Axe is already in there. And we switch it over. So n it actually doesn't say. Uh, we're, we're going up from 16 to 17 attacks damage, which is great. But now the durability is 973 as compared to a 472, which is awesome. Okay, so here we are in the Twilight Forest. Obviously, the map for this is reset as well. I don't remember if I found a Twilight Lich, but I'm going to have to basically wander around until I find one. They're actually not hard to find. I'm probably not going to make the map a um, magic map, right? Where's the magic map? Magic map is right here. We cannot make the magic map. So we won't make the magic map. Okay, cool. Never mind. Just even forget I said anything. And of course, along with the journey map thing, all of the prospecting I did in the Twilight Forest is also gone, which is amazing because this is the only place you can find things like nickel, silver, uh, lead, all that kind of stuff. I don't even remember where my mine entrance is. I will say, I do just absolutely love these firefly jars. I'm going to gather as many of them as I can. A raven. Uh, I'm going to kill this man. Uh, he didn't give me the thing anyways. I was going to say just in case he had the raven feather so I can make a magic map. Also, I wish I brought some bones. I could get a dog. Maybe I'll do a quick uh, slash home and grab some bones. That'd be kind of sick to have a dog. Hey there, little guy. Come here. Come here. I know you want this. Oh, okay. I was I got really scared for a second there. Yeah, we can give him a beautiful pink collar. And now you're mine. Ah, and after a long, long walk, we've come a fair ways. I took the long, I like I took the long scenic route instead of a uh, walk swimming through this lake. Actually, I've swam through this lake before, haven't I? Because I was very confused. I didn't know there was big lakes like this in the Twilight Forest. Um, but. I guess we must have just missed this last time I came over here. Anyways, I'll uh, meet you in there because we're going to have to actually go through the thick of it to kill this guy. All right, we're inside and surprisingly enough, there doesn't there doesn't appear to be very many mobs right now. And as I say that, I hear multiple things die. I'm going to eat up really quickly just so we uh, can have a little bit of saturation, a little bit of regeneration, even though I have 17 hearts, it appears. Ooh, these cave spiders. Ooh, at, ooh, at least I one shot them. And we can't easily get can't easily get away from the monster spawners. I should have left him outside. He's gonna get destroyed by these guys. Um also there are boss is in here. A couple of iron ingots, nine slash potions of poison. Very cool, very cool. Um Okay, this really isn't that bad. This hatchet is really quite good at what it does. Um, oh, this guy has armor. That's what it is. And can I break this one? Nope, they all suck. I think what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to break apart some of this wall and I'll block off the area to the top once I get up there so we won't actually have to deal with any monsters walking up and trying to kill us. I can also place down a couple of torches so you guys can see, I suppose. Um... Okay, this is going to be a battle, and I hope, hope, hope I won't die. All right, I've uh, blocked off monsters from both sides, and my wolf is going to sit here and hopefully not get destroyed by a stray uh, fireball that I'm about to get chucked at me. Okay, so this guy isn't a super hard fight. He has some minions, and they'll all throw fireballs at you. Basically, what you have to do is you got to Gotta whack all of the fireballs back and try not to get hit by them. If you hit it on this guy, he will uh, take some damage. Oh, my dog is going to get killed. Okay, this is not very fun. Please sit down. Oh, buddy. Oh, I haven't even done any damage yet. Uh, 
There we go, that should do a little bit. Nope, did nothing. I feel like I might die on this one. Uh-oh. Oh no. <laughs> He's up there, just suffering. Oh, and there he goes. And I'm about to get destroyed, so we're gonna run away and maybe attempt this fight again in a couple of minutes. Oh, and I got a wolf hide from him. Oh, that sucks. Okay, um, I don't know what I did. I hit him like one time, and I hit him with three fireballs all in one go, and I think that did all of his things. We just need to hit him a couple more times, and he should be dead. Okay. Wow, I, that was, I feel like, kind of anticlimactic because... Oh, I love this thing. This thing is literally a cobblestone generator. Um, this. It's so weird. It just places cobblestone. And it does crafting? And it says shift. Yeah. It's like a handheld crafting table that places cobblestone. I don't know why it exists, but it doesn't. It's kind of cool. And we need these lich bones later for something. I don't remember. We do we do need them for something. All right, boys. I think I'm going to go ahead and call the video there. Uh, a stupid zombie, boss zombie, put a cobweb in my base. Um, and I don't have a sword. <laughs> but I think I'm going to call the video there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and oh shoot, I'm really sad I lost that dog. Um, it was very short lived too, he lived for maybe 15 minutes. Um, and I guess I, where did I put my bones? Oh, I put them in here, I have seven now, we can go get another dog really quick. You guys wanna go get another dog really quick and then we'll end the video? Let's do that. Oh, okay, one and two. One and one? Oh man, this is going to be the redemption arc I deserve. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Did you seriously just... Okay, no, that wasn't my guy. Uh, okay, uh, I didn't expect to get more than one, so I have one magenta die for that bad boy. And you know what? You can have a you can have a very, very classic gold collar. Or not gold. Well, you know what? We'll call it gold. Dandelion yellow. There you go. Beautiful. And... Yeah, guys, that's going to be the video. Hopefully you all enjoyed. I'm going to make my way back home. I'm actually just, as soon as the, as soon as I end the video, I'm just going to slash home because I have FTP utilities installed. But uh, we can make it more uh, climactic this way. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, maybe leave a like or something. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you in the next one for hopefully a very productive HV video where we'll get into, like, logistic pipes and stuff. Take care. And, uh, bye-bye.